Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Dave from Idle Hands, and uh, we're just gonna talk a little bit about uh, Ubisoft. I don't know what's going on with them, but they are just not having a good, a good day, a good month, a good year. Actually, a good couple, few years. <laughs> uh, so let's just jump right into it, um, and uh, let's let's discuss. All right, let's do it. As you probably know, there's been some major Ubisoft news occurring over the last 24 hours or so. Stuff that we also talked about in the second segment of the day yesterday. So if you saw that, you should be in the loop with everything. But just to recap super quick, AC Shadows has been delayed to February 2025. Ubisoft admits that Outlaws is underselling. And in a message released to investors, Ubisoft addresses a number of issues at the company and outlines some changes that they're going to try to help fix them. This following an internal probe also going on at Ubisoft to try and understand why the company has been failing so massively over... Well, I mean, look, it's pretty easy to know why, at least on the surface level, that they're failing massively, at least in Star Wars and uh, the Assassin, the new Assassin's Creed uh, Shadows coming out. And uh, I mean, there's kind of no way to get around it. It's uh, it's 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 all about the DEI. It is, you know, I mean, to each their own. If you if you want to believe in that stuff, or whatever, great. But just don't push it on everybody else, right? Um, if it, it's apparent that this game, the Assassin's Creed, the new one coming out, the reason they are postponing it is because well, first of all, there's a lot of issues with the game, uh, just technical issues. Set aside. Uh, Yasuke being like uh, whatever a six two <laughs> or six three whatever black guy uh, who they made gay uh, apparently uh, and a samurai and made him the main character and not like a Japanese so like I, I saw an interesting uh, thread or post or comment and uh, speaking of Assassin's Creed and is that the formula for I think all the games except for this latest one has been uh he had to have a fictional character like the first one was uh altair right he was arabian right and it was set in the middle eastern arabic i don't remember exactly where but it's set in that area that you know and it was fine uh the next one uh was it en enzio or something the the he was a fictional character italian set in ancient Italian, Italy, <laughs> not, not ancient Italian, ancient Italy. And it was fine. Uh, and so on and so forth. That was the formula, fictional character. It was representative of whatever area of the, of the world that game was set in. And then they just built that world, trying to make it, I guess as historically accurate for like architecture and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, that's been the formula that has worked every time. This is the only one, to my knowledge, that, and this is the one that everyone's been, like, just screaming for for years, is Assassin's Creed set in Japan, and they do have a Japanese character, but she's a secondary character, as far as I can tell. And and then they go and they make the, the main character some big huge black dude that to i mean i guess he's historical but there's some i guess debate on whether he was actual samurai but i mean the point is is why would they have chosen to put him in as the main character and there's only one reason because it's a dei thing right uh you look at you look at the studio every single person i've seen from the studio have been like white people <laughs> it's like okay and that's fine um and then they're, but they're like if they're infected with this whole dei stuff and there's a lot of a lot of women in the studio too which that is not inherently bad but if you have a bunch of karens or dei chicks <laughs> in there uh you're not gonna have a good game i'm sorry that's just the reality 
of, of how that goes down. So anyways, let's uh, listen to what this guy says. Over the last number of years, and finally, Ubisoft CEO Yves Guillemot. Did I get the name right that time? Well, he's made a statement saying that Ubisoft really doesn't have an agenda, and this particular... That, that's a total lie. ...killer statement has actually enraged a number of armchair activists and similar type of journalists. That's what we're going to be going over in this video, as it should be very entertaining, so I hope you're ready, and let's enjoy. We start with Paul Tassi, who's responding to Stefan Totilo, who said, From CEO, regarding polarized comments around Ubisoft, I want to reaffirm that we are an entertainment-first company, creating games for the broadest possible audience, and our goal is not to push any specific agenda. We remain committed to creating games that everyone can enjoy. That being the statement from Eves that I mentioned earlier, and Paul Tassi responds saying, it is embarrassing, Ubisoft is admitting, that they're actually rattled by the culture war stuff over Outlaws and Shadows. He had more to say than that. They should be rattled. I mean, if they're not making the game for the consumer, for the main demographic of, of who's going to play the game, then who are they making the game for? You know what I mean? Like, it just that's kind of business 101. Uh, so, I don't know. That, but before we get to that, let me share my opinion on this. Just... Simplifying all of these issues into culture war stuff seems like a very odd take by Paul Tassi. Because this situation involves people in Japan talking about their country being disrespected, as they're also lied to by a massive corporation regarding their own history. But apparently to Paul Tassi, all of this is just culture war stuff. Now, if you're not familiar with Paul Tassi, he's often been criticized in gaming circles for numerous takes that he's made over the years that seem dismissive of the issues people have with things such as DEI. For example, back when Ubisoft issued their apology to the Japanese community, Paul Tassi had this to say. When the hyper-force pushback to your game is the not-Japanese-culture-war talking point of you putting a DI samurai in your game, I would not engage with these people at all. So it also looks like he has a history of dismissing the issues that Japanese people have with AC Shadows. Uh, yeah, and, and those are the people that should have issues <laughs> with, uh, with the new game coming out. Uh, cause it's a train wreck. Uh, I mean, and, and not just the DEI stuff, like we're talking basic game mechanics, uh, the, 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 uh, the architecture, uh, the building, the, the game, the level design. Right. I mean, there, I've seen, I've seen like, just like weird, like floating, uh, doors and like stairs leading to walls and not to the door and like uh the the combat looks horrible uh those mechanics just look like trash uh they had uh, a yasuke riding on a horse and like the horse you could see visibly like sliding as it was walking so like they couldn't even get like that down so there are a lot of issues with this game besides any kind of DEI, whatever you want to label it as affecting the game. So I'm not surprised and I don't know what they can do, but I'm not surprised that they pushed it back to February. I suspect they'll probably even push it back even further because um, they've got a lot of stuff to clean up. I don't think they could just like write out swap Yasuke for uh, another character. I don't think that would be possible at this point unless they just delay it for like another year or something. Uh, but yeah, it's they were doing it to themselves. So this is, of course, just one more example. I don't want to go through all this guy's tweets, just giving you a little bit more context. It's a truly bizarre thing. How many armchair activist types and journalists, etc., etc., are in complete denial about the failures of DEI? In my opinion, DEI is largely something that companies have tried to use for profit motives, attempts to appeal to ESG funds, and things like that. So whenever I see someone defending those sort of practices, to me, they just come off as massive corporate bootlickers. Now, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. The whole ESG thing is just, uh, I don't, I don't understand it. I really don't because most companies that embrace the whole DEI culture, they end up losing money in various ways, you know? So I don't know. I mean, Bud Light, everyone's remembers what happened to them. Uh, Target, 
had an issue. Harley Davidson had an issue. I mean, they're just go on and on, right? The the term, you know, go woke, go broke, right? It's it's kind of true for, for a lot of cases, a lot of companies. And it just, like, how long is this going to have to go on until they realize maybe they should start, like, making games for the consumer? You know what I mean? Like, that makes sense. I mean, at least to me it does. Now, as DI has been failing and actually been costing these corporations more and more money in many cases, the topic comes up more and more. And we see more people criticizing that stuff, as well as more people like Paul Tassi seemingly attempting to dismiss those criticisms. Another example of this, albeit perhaps to a lesser extent, were some of the takes that he was making during Concord, where he seemed to be in denial of sorts about the game's terrible player count after launch, wondering if it was even just a glitch or something. <laughs> it's like it's impossible for some people to admit the issues with the character roster, and now practices such as DEI largely contributed to a number... How could he be shocked that people have issues with the character roster in Concord? I mean, it's not so much the character roster or the characters. It's the way they made the character. <laughs> like, they're just like, I mean, I'm a large guy. I, you know, I'm uh, trying to lose some weight here. But like, I have no intention of playing some big, huge fat dude or chick. That's like in the game, like running and flipping and doing all this crazy acrobatics. I was like, no, nah, that's not even possible. It wouldn't happen. And, and, and I personally do not want to play as another fat person. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe I'm a horrible person for saying that. But I want to play a dude that's just like, he doesn't have to be all ripped and everything. But he has to be fit. And same thing with the with the lady character, you know, they don't have to be like all super hot or whatever, but don't make them ugly. You know what I'm saying? Common sense, people. Number of issues with the game. Now, I'm not saying that all of the issues with Concord were simply DI related. For example, the price point in the saturated market. Sure, these were also contributing factors to Concord's massive failure. Yeah. But when you see people ignoring That's the DI related issues as well, it comes off as ignorant or bad faith. And for those that don't know, the person Paul Tassi was talking to in those screenshots, Gene Park, who was also seemingly in denial in their own way, claims to be affiliated with the Washington Post. Anyways, back to the current news with Ubisoft and Paul Tassi's takes on this stuff going on right now. He added this to his other tweet, saying, Outlaws could have starred a guy who looks like Han Solo, and Shadows could have starred a guy who looks like Jin Sakai, and I do not think it would meaningfully change the fortunes of either of those games. I think this would be a larger contributing factor to AC Shadows. Star Wars Outlaws has a number of other issues aside from people just not liking the MC. For example, yeah. a lot of people said that the gameplay was just boring, especially the stealth segments, which is a large part of the game. And that you didn't feel all that much like an outlaw. Like you were very limited in the so-called immoral stuff that you could do in the game itself. Of course, there's also been numerous glitches, and these are just a few brief examples of some of the issues that people have with Star Wars Outlaws. But for Paul Tassi to suggest that having an actual Japanese male lead for AC Shadows wouldn't meaningfully change the fortune of the game seems like an absolutely insane thing to say. Yeah, it would actually totally change uh, the fortune, <laughs> however you want to term it, of the game. Even if it would have just been the female, I don't know what her name is, but the female uh, protagonist in the game, she's Japanese. Even if it was just her... I mean, of course, some people would be like, oh my gosh, it's a woman, it's a lady ninja, and blah, blah, blah. Like, that's crazy, and I'm not gonna, whatever. Okay, whatever. But it would have been better overall for the image of the game if the protagonist, whether it be male or female, was actually Japanese. Like, hello. <laughs> like, come on. And we don't care as, as, consumers of games we don't care about their sexual identity or their pronouns or any of that stuff like we just don't care just let us play a good game that's all we ask and we will like throw you money okay it's it's not it's not hard and once again it also seems dismissive towards the issues that many people in japan many japanese people have with the game. It's really odd that Paul Tassi seems to have a recurring theme where he's very dismissive towards the issues that Japanese people have 
towards AAC Shadows. I do think there's other issues that AAC Shadows has. I mean, there's clearly other reasons why Ubisoft delayed the game. The probability of them changing Yasuke at this point seems near 0%. So there's probably other things that they're trying to polish, which... Uh, polish is a very nice way of saying it. <laughs> They've got to like redo a lot of stuff. A uh, lot of different textures, a lot of the different uh, architecture. There's a lot of stuff they need to change out in this game. And plus, they just need to make the game look better. I don't know what engine they're using or whatever, but it doesn't look... It looks like an old game. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. They have, they've got their work cut out for them to try to get a bunch of this stuff done by February. I don't think they're going to do it. Which also falls in line with the other parts of the statement that they made. Also, as I mentioned yesterday, there's also just a general negative perception and a loss of goodwill that Ubisoft has had. So perhaps they're going to try and spend the next few months trying to recover some goodwill at least before releasing AC Shadows. The point I'm making here is there's other issues going on with AC Shadows besides just Yasuke. Yeah. But again, Yasuke is certainly a huge factor. All of this leads us to an article that Paul Tassi wrote today for Forbes titled After Assassin's Creed Shadows Delay, Ubisoft acknowledges Outlaw's issue, anti-woke pushback. It's funny that he complains about culture war stuff even when that label is oversimplifying the issues going on and is also as I mentioned rather dismissive towards the issues at large. But then he's also going to simultaneously write an article that's like oh it's just anti-woke pushback. Seems like this guy is actually propagating culture war stuff if anything. The article goes over some of the stuff that's a very good point. It sounds like he is. Stuff that we've already covered here in this video and others, so I'm skipping all that. And let's check out this section where he writes, Then Ubisoft surprisingly tacitly acknowledged the narrative that his games have become too woke or agenda-driven, according to a set. Well, that's actually a really good thing. If they're starting to actually acknowledge it and uh, push back from within the company, that's a good thing. I heard the term uh, a few days ago, toxic, toxic positivity. And that is one of the things that is just really ruining not just the gaming industry, but in uh, any industry that starts going down the DEI road. Uh, I know in my old job, uh, they went full board DEI and just embraced it. It was during COVID. So there was that whole thing as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was hard to push back on anything. And uh, and I remember I, I basically had a decision as like, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm all for vaccinations. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I don't want to go in, into that for this video, but um, I just wasn't really comfortable about getting the COVID shot. And uh, but my job is kind of like, you either do it or you're fired. And I was like, well, I can't lose my job. It, this is not a die worth a uh, hill worth dying on right so uh, i you know i i bent the knee i got the shot who knows what it did to me i don't know but um but i will tell you i, I did have a uh, heart failure uh you know, maybe like two years later so uh, coincidence i don't know <laughs> i have no idea but anyways uh yeah this toxic positivity where you can't say anything like like there's nobody in the company that was like eh Maybe we should put a giant black dude in a Japanese set game. Like, it just doesn't kind of make sense, right? Even though he might be an historical figure. Because if somebody did say that, they would probably be threatened to, to, to be fired. And, uh, you know, you have to pick your battles. But if you have too much of that, you can't you can't steer anything from uh, that's off course back on course segment of the internet and posting that statement from Eves where he denies Ubisoft having any specific agenda. He then writes, while Ubisoft already apologized to its Japanese audiences over some questionable promotional materials for Shadows, the pushback was also about the inclusion of Yasuke as one of the two leads, a legendary black samurai, where there was an ensuing debate of whether he was actually a samurai, and a stated idea that it shouldn't be starring him at all. It's yeah, it shouldn't be starring him at all. I mean, I don't care if he was a samurai, like... Uh, make another game 
that is having him be the star because i mean that would be totally cool like you're just totally kicking ass with a huge black dude that's like trained as a samurai i mean that's really cool but not in the assassin's creed universe it does not fit it just doesn't it should have been somebody that's japanese like i said doesn't matter whether it's a female or a male regardless they should have been Japanese. And this guy sounds not the the narrator, but this guy is making all these points. Sounds like a real douche. Sorry. It's pretty funny that despite all of the evidence coming out that Yasuke really wasn't conclusively a samurai, something that Ubisoft themselves has also admitted. Here's Paul Tassi claiming he was not just a samurai, but a legendary one. He yeah, I don't think there's any proof that he was a legendary samurai. samurai. Tassie, you're a douche. He goes on to write, There was similar pushback to Kay Vest leading Star Wars Outlaws as a woman, and a not attractive enough woman at that. So he's really not going to mention that the main issue here was that Ubisoft made her less attractive, like they went out of their way to make Kay Vest less attractive than the actress that she's based on. Yeah, she's actually a pretty good looking lady. Uh, I don't know why they made the model, the in-game model. And she looks like she had a car accident, like she went through the windshield, right? Like her face just looks horrible. Uh, and I mean, whether it's politically correct or not, I mean, let's face it, the, dem the main demographic for Star Wars are men. And men, if they have to play a woman, they want to play a good looking woman, you know what I mean? Like, she doesn't have to be uh, running around in a bikini. Although that probably wouldn't hurt. <laughs> I'm just saying. But I mean, look, they 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 should have gone with uh, somebody that was... I mean, they, they, they should have like made it look more like the actual actress. And there wouldn't have been probably any blowback. Because she's not a bad looking lady. Uh, and like the, um, the actress for, uh, Alloy, um, she, she's like totally beautiful. Like what, what, what happened there? Uh, I mean, I never didn't really complain about her, uh, the character in the game, but I mean, when you look at the actual actress, it's like, wow, that's a kind of night and day. You know what I mean? I think, I think guys would have much rather of been looking at her face rather than Alloy's, uh, the face they went with. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know that sounds very crass, probably, but, I mean, it's just the truth. It's the world we live in, so I, you just have to suck it up and deal with it. Something that's very bizarre and certainly worth pointing out, but, hey, Paul Dassey ain't gonna mention that part here. He then says, no uh, historical accuracy complaints there, as it was pretty straightforward woke slash DI talking points there, but it is surprising to see Ubisoft entertain this at all. There's another article I found that has very odd coverage, to say the least, regarding all this Ubisoft stuff. This one, from FastCompany.com. The author, Chris Morris, writing, Video game maker Ubisoft in chaos after anti-DEI backlash. The Assassin's Creed game maker delayed its biggest launch of the year, reduced forecasts, and is facing calls to sell in what is being called an incel victory. Okay, first of all, I haven't seen anyone say incel victory anywhere. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I have never, I've not heard anybody talk about incel victory. I mean, incel is a stupid, retarded word anyways. But, uh, mm, okay. Yeah, this, this, ah! Where. Seems like this guy just made that up. And once again, I'll point out how these sort of people come off as such bigots, man. Dismissing the issues that Japanese people have with this game. Very reasonable and understandable issues. And then saying this is like an incel victory, seriously. These virtue signaler types are so hypocritical. And they're also just weird. I mean, who even talks like that? Oh, it's an incel victory. Like either this guy made that up or this must be some like termly online Redditor talk here or something. <laughs> Moving on. Because yeah. spoiler alert, it's as bad in the article itself or arguably even worse. He pulls out the classic, oh, the backlash is just from the far right. My gosh, these people are boring with their rhetoric, saying the same nonsense for years and years and years. And they wonder why people don't listen to them anymore. Check it out. Yeah, they're, they're the NPCs, <laughs> not the far right people. And it's not the far right, okay? It's just people with common sense. Hey. Yeah, right here he says, 
The booking's shortfall was technically due to the delay and disappointing sales of Star Wars Allies. However, the underlying reason for both of those, at least in part, is the far-right opposition to diversity and inclusion. No, it's the normal opposition to a horrible game. I mean, let's, let's just cut through the, the BS there. Oh my gosh, what a joke. Yeah, diversity and inclusion, something that corporations love to gaslight people about. Oh, hey, we really care about this stuff. Not really. We just want money. But hey, if you criticize these corporations, uh, you're apparently far right, far right for criticizing corruption in corporations. He goes on to say, Outlaws, which has a female lead character, received mostly solid reviews from professional critics. Which don't matter. <laughs> I mean, their opinions really don't matter. I've never read an article or review uh, that has changed my mind or, or, you know, whether I buy the game or not. Now, it's interesting to read the reviews just to see what their take is. And, you know, that's interesting. But I've never read a review where I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm totally not going to buy that game or, 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 or change my mind to make it so I did buy the game. So it's the, the consumer's that you want to pay attention to, not the critics. Because it's the consumers that buy the game, not the critics. Oh, professional critics. But many players gave it a zero rating out of 10 on Metacritic, citing quote-unquote forced DI narratives and claiming the developers, quote, spent more time on the woke culture than on the story and gameplay, unquote. Some players were also unhappy with the optional season pass model that tacked an additional 40 bucks onto the game's price for extra mm. missions. The review bombing, driven by anti-DI <laughs> backlash, seemingly worked and set off a chain of events that led to Wednesday's announcement. I forgot to mention this. In the intro of the article, he says, Ubisoft abruptly canceled its appearance at the Tokyo Game Show and postponed all press previews of the upcoming Assassin's Creed Shadows. Yeah, that's shocking. And that is very telling that they know they effed up. And uh, they didn't want to get just destroyed at the Tokyo Game Show because they would have. They would have been booed off the stage and it would have been a horrible train wreck. But probably a fun one to watch. <laughs> but yeah, of course they cancel. They would have to cancel because I don't even... I, I, honestly, I don't, I, I, I don't think they're going to even make the February. I think it's going to get pushed back even farther. It, and they may even push it back, like, who knows, maybe like up to a year, because they have to change all the major and minor problems in this game. I, I love Assassin's Creed series, but they, they have become formulaic, and, and I don't know. This one just kind of looks like a hot mess, regardless of DEI. Wednesday, we learned why. Anti-DI backlash has sent the company spinning. So for one, as funny as that is... There's also a lot more going on with Ubisoft than the anti-DI stuff. Like, for example, they've been mismanaged heavily for years. Yeah, and their stocks show it. Uh, I think the last time I saw it was like a couple days ago or something. It was down to like, I was like $2.40 or something like that. It was like ridiculously low. And uh, some people say it's going to get lower. So I don't, I don't know. I, I, it's if I was a shareholder of that company, I would be absolutely going through the roof. And actually, they've, um, they've, uh, I guess, they want to launch a, a investigation or something into the leadership of the company because, yeah, it's it's it, it is dying. It, the company is dying from DEI. And from other things, not just EI, but yeah, it's it's very sad because Ubisoft used to be like the pinnacle of gaming. You buy an Ubisoft game, you know you're going to have an awesome time, a great adventure, and you're going to be thrilled with uh, your experience. But not now, not now. And it's it's so sad. But leave it up to this so-called journalist veteran to not acknowledge that and to try and smear all the Ubisoft critics as a bunch of far-right incels as he seemingly attempts to defend this massive corrupt corporation. And that's about all yeah. that I have to say on this topic. Just truly bizarre stuff from these journalists. 
However, I suppose that's to be expected in this day and age, and part of why they're now such a disgraced profession. Let me know what you think about all of this stuff in the comments. As always, thank you so much for tuning in, and if you enjoyed my coverage, consider liking and or subscribing to the channel for more, and I'll see you in the next one. All right. Well, that was uh, that was really interesting. Um, I hope I hope Ubisoft can turn it around, but they're going to have to get like all of the top people are going to have to get replaced, and uh, uh, for the company itself. And then you go into start going into these studios. Uh, I'm not sure how many different like studios they have for the different games they make, um, but. I think for most of those studios, they're going to have to chop the heads off of at least the, the, the first two tiers, the top tiers of, uh, of management. Um, and, and then honestly, you're going to have to weed out all the people that are just, are just pushing this DEI agenda because they, they don't know what they're doing. Um, and it's just, it's, 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 it's evident. You know, they push their agenda, they push this ideology, and then they hire people that don't know what they're doing. They don't have the skill set, and it shows in the games. I mean, that's, that's how it is. All right. I, I hope and and pray that Ubisoft can turn it around, and in the next few years, uh, they can start making the great games that they used to. Because I know they have it in them. They just have to, They just have to do the right thing. All right. Well, uh, thanks for tuning in, stopping by, watching the video. And until the next video, have a great day. And we'll uh, catch you later. All right. Bye.